much for this night that again he he brought us to his holy church we came to meet our Lord we came so that he may speak to us and brethren we know very well that the Lord has come here before us in this church before we came here the Lord was here let there be glory in the name of our Lord and he was waiting for us and we are two gathered in mind in his name he says that he is among us let us open our Bibles Let us open our Bibles in the Epistle to the Colossians, chapter 3, and verse 12. Therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, put on tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, long-suffering, bearing with one, with one another and forgiving one another. If anyone has a complaint against another, even as Christ forgave you, so you also must do. But above all these things, put on love, which is the bond of perfection. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to which also you are called in one body and be thankful let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord and whatever you do in word or deed do all in the name of the Lord Jesus giving thanks to God the Father through Him. Amen. Glory be to our Lord, brethren. We thank God for His holy word that He has given to us in His church to be preached as exactly it is written in His gospel. Let there be glory in the name of our Lord. And we are blessed, brethren, because we are in a church that truly the word of God is preached as it is written. Let there be glory in the name of our Lord. We are blessed, sa says that our ears are blessed for the things that we hear, for the great things that we hear. And our eyes, as the Lord said, are blessed because we see miracles and we leave miracles, my beloved brethren. Let there be glory in the name of our Lord. And of course, the greatest miracle is in our life, how the Lord has changed us, how we were before we came to know the Lord, and how He corrects us every day. This is the greatest miracle, and we see it daily, um, God to work it in our lives. We thank God, because He has added us to a holy church, brethren. He has chosen us and He has added us to a holy church. And that's why we are blessed, brethren. Let there be glory in the name of our Lord. Here it says that He has chosen us. Not that we were special people from others, that we had something special. We could say that we had wisdom or that we were very good people or that we have some a special characteristic no he didn't choose us for this no brethren but god loves all people and he wants all people to come to the knowledge and repent and turn to the lord let there be glory in the name of our lord and even more according to other people many consider consider us that we don't have wisdom that we are fool that we are fools they say that you, you're not very clever people might say if we testify to them or you are weak because of this but we thank God because it says that the Lord has chosen the babes of this world so that he may put to shame the wise people and the weak 
so that he may put shame uh, the strong. We thank God that he took this veil, this covering that is out in the world that the enemy of the soul has put um, as the veil that Moses had when he went down from the Mount of um, Sina, Zion. The people of Israel couldn't look at him and they pleaded him to put a cover. Glory be to the Lord. But this covering, brethren, exists in this world. And this covering, we had it also, but the Lord took it out, brethren. We thank God very much. And my beloved brethren, the truth is that the Lord speaks once and twice as the word of God, but the man doesn't listen. It doesn't listen. The Lord calls people because he doesn't look with partiality. He didn't look with partiality um, to us because we weren't different from other people. But God calls everyone that there be glory in the name of our Lord because God loves everyone. But it says that people had heavy ears and they had closed their eyes lest they could see and lest they could hear and return back and heal them. Glory be to the name of our Lord. We thank God. But our, great, our joy is great because we enjoy, my beloved brethren, the end of our faith, which is the salvation of our souls. Let there be glory in the name of our Lord. We enjoy what other righteous people before before of us before us and um, the prophets have searched and prophesied for our salvation, the things that we live today, and we leave things that even the angel the angels want to, to fall and live. We thank God very much for this choice that he made to us, as it says here. And he has sanctified us. That is, he has made us to separate from sin. Glory be to the name of our Lord. The holy people, uh, the people out in the world are in deceit. They say that this holy man, if after he died, Yes, he might have been holy. We can make it a feast in his name. But this is not the holy person only. The holy people are alive and they are walking on this earth. Why? Because God sanctifies them. Someone cannot become by himself holy. But God comes and sanctifies the man. How? By the Holy Spirit. We thank God. By the Holy Spirit, God comes and he sanctifies man. And he gives him the strength to resist and sin. We can do with our power to resist. We shouldn't say that we are strong. That I, you know, I need, uh, I need nothing. I'm not shaking with anything. We don't walk in this way, but we recognize our weakness. And we say, help me, Lord. I'm not doing your will. Glory be to the name of our Lord. And we thank God because God hears us and He helps us in our decision to follow Him. Because He has loved us, my beloved brethren. He has loved us and He has made us by the Holy Spirit. He has made us His children. He has given us His Holy Spirit through which we cry out about our Father. This is not a spirit of cowardness. Let there be glory in the name of our Lord. But it's a spirit of adoption. And through this spirit, through this Holy Spirit, we have become the children of God. And we have become joint heirs of our Lord Jesus Christ. Glory be to the name of our Lord. And that's why here it says that we are also beloved. And though we said that God does not look with partiality, 
but because we are children of God. He looks with partiality for his children. We are beloved, here it says. Why? Because we are not any more uh, creatures. Every, all people are creatures of God and creation of God. But those who believed and have received the Holy Spirit, they have received the authority to be called children of God. And of course, God looks with partiality toward his children. He wants his children to be happy. He is with them and helps them in their weaknesses and their diseases within God. He hasn't left us alone to walk and whatever happens in our life, we know that the Lord is with us. He is our hope. He is our refuge. He is our escape. Glory be to the name of our Lord, brethren. We thank God. And for this great grace that the Lord has sent into our lives to each one, here it says, So put on tender mercies. Put on tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, long-suffering. Put on what? Put on the fruit of the Holy Spirit. And there are more things. But here it mentions these things. But there are more things. Love, joy, faith. We thank God. Let there be glory in the name of our Lord. Put on tender mercies. That is, when I see someone who has a problem, I should run toward him in the name of Jesus Christ. Not for me, not so that others could say how nice man this is, but so that I may help him. Why? Because I love God. And the love of God that fills my heart pours out and gives to other people. So that people may know that we are the children of God within God. And the Bible is full of examples with people that had tender mercies that wanted to offer, that wanted to minister. Glory be to the name of our Lord. There in Joppa there were there was Dorcas and it happened that she became sick and she died and sorrow came in the church because she was a beloved sister. Why? Because she she did mercy. She helped others. And they called Peter if she could raise him, raise her, and they prayed. And when he went there, the widows were crying and showing the things that he had, she had made. And the clothes, as long as she lived. We thank God. We thank God. Because he makes, may, he gives him kindness to be useful. As Onesimus. And the epistle to Philemon, Paul says that about Onesimus, he says that he used to be useless at any time. He didn't know the Lord. He couldn't offer anything, not even to his master. But now for me, he's useful. Why? Because he has come to know the Lord. And now he is a useful man. We thank God. Or about Cornelius. Cornelius is a nice example. He made mercy. He made alms. And his alms, he was a centurion. Yes, he, has, he had authority. When people receive authority... They don't count anything else. They consider other people lowly and small before their stature. But this man, Cornelius, made alms and prayers, and the alms and his prayers went up in his memorial before, before the throne of God. We thank God. Let there be glory in the name of our Lord, brethren. So, um... Put on humility. God wants us to be humble. And in another place, it says that God resists to the proud, but to the humble, He gives grace. And the first example of humility 
the Lord showed it to us after the dinner that he had with the disciples he took on a garment to wash their feet and Peter said Lord not to me you shouldn't wash my feet but the Lord said if you don't wash your feet you don't have um, part with me and then Peter said not only my feet but the whole body but he who has to be cleansed he doesn't need but only to be washed to wash his feet but then he said that I gave you an example if I did this that you call me Lord and it's good that you do it and the teacher because I am if I did this you all to do the same thing to others to people humbly because a servant cannot be greater than his master neither a disciple greater than his teacher within God the Lord gave us an example of humility many times we see the religious people we see that they don't have humility people don't have humility they demand from others to go and serve them and to fall on their feet and bow them but it's not so the Lord didn't teach us this we thank God we thank God and we see very well that God resists to the proud there in the example with Nebuchadnezzar what had happened he was walking in the walls and he was saying I've done all these things did you do all these things by yourselves Ex right in that moment as it had been prophesied to him he became mad and he lost his mind and he became like an animal he used to eat grass her, his hair became long like the eagle and his nails like the wild birds and no one wanted him anymore but when he lifted up his eyes when he humbled himself and he lifted up his eyes to heaven and he re recognized that the Lord is above all then his mind came back and all his servants came back to him and everything was restored why because he humbled himself he humbled himself glory be to the name of our Lord and further down it says that we should put on meekness this is a difficult thing we live in a society brethren um, here in this city we are close to another and it's difficult it's not an easy thing when you drive at work people say to you some things it's difficult to be meek but my beloved brethren we shouldn't forget that we carry the name of God and if you go astray then the enemy will find uh, a reason to accuse you and the name of God to be reviled because of you may God help us brethren may God help us to keep our anger ourself let there be glory in the name of our Lord why because my beloved brethren we have an accuser who continually goes and accuses the children of God glory be to God we shouldn't give him uh, a reason to do this we thank God may God help us brethren and also we should be long-suffering as that servant who said that he owed 1,000 talent he said he gave them but when he went out what did he do he took one of his fellows who owed him 100 denarii which was nothing with comparison to the 1000 that he owed but he was choking him and he put him in prison also he wasn't long suffering with him 
and others told what had happened to his master and he called him what has happened didn't I leave you one thousand denarii that you owed shouldn't you do the same thing and he delivered him to the torturers till he would deliver the last penny we thank God so we should be long suffering brethren and further down it says bearing with one another and forgiving one another if anyone has a complaint against another we thank God we should forgive brethren and I'm not uh, talking uh, about the people out in the world but many times in the church we have fellowship with the brothers and sisters and I might say something and you might be hurt we shouldn't keep it in our hearts we shouldn't go from the other corridor and you from this you should tell me that I have hurt you I might we might haven't understood this many times we do things that we don't understand many times we say words words come out from our mouth and he might be hurt if I have hurt you come and tell this to me we thank God you shouldn't change your way when you see me oh so that shouldn't it shouldn't happen this because I couldn't bear it the next time did the Lord teach us this did he tell you if your brother tempts you go from the other side so that you may not see him again no but on the contrary he it says forgiving one another if anyone has a complaint against another we should forgive them and how will I show him that I have forgiven him I should go to him and serve him I should greet him kiss him without hypocrisy brethren doing this with love with the love that God puts in my heart we thank God we thank God even as Christ forgave you so you also must do God has a page that he had torn we should do the same thing that's what the Lord is waiting from us to do let there be glory in the name of our Lord but above all these things put on love which is the bond of perfection brethren that's what it says and it's the fulfilling of the law love faith hope and love the 13th chapter of the Corinthians of the episode to the Corinthians but greatest of all these things is love and though even if I speak the tongues of the angels if I do not have love I'm a sounding brass and even if I give my body to be burned but I do not have love then this doesn't benefit me can a man give his body to be burned yes it can be done since the Word of God says this and I was thinking um, that these people there in Fukushima they went to this nuclear factory so that they may correct correct the mistakes these people sacrifice their lives but did they did they do this because of love I don't know if they did this because of love they will have their reward but if I do this so that they may write my name with gold letters in history then brethren love is the one that will give us our entrance to the kingdom of heaven and also reward the reward that we are waiting to receive there in heaven not we don't want people to say to us bravo we shouldn't care about this at all but in that day we want to hear well done good and faithful servant you stood faithful to the little things I will give you many things we should listen to this from the Lord that's why we should work here this in the small life that the Lord has given to us someone has a great gift another one has a small gift but the Lord is waiting for us to work with it 
to everyone he has given something he has given talents we shouldn't go and hide and hide them to a handkerchief and the, he said that I was afraid and I knew, I, I knew that you were an oyster man and that you sow where you do not reap that's why I was afraid and I hid it you hid it? I will judge you from your words because you knew that I was an oyster master and that I so, uh, reap whatever I didn't sow but you didn't do the list that you could do and which is this? this is to put it in the, in the bank you couldn't do this thing is it is if we are in the church and say that I can do nothing in whatever situation every one of us he may be either he is strong or weak someone could say that I can't do anything yes you can can you put just and clean why we can all do something brethren we thank God and we should know that this have reward has reward in heaven glory be to the Lord and let the peace of God rule in your hearts the Apostle gives a wish by the Holy Spirit and of course when God wishes to us he is strong to accomplish what he says we don't stop there in the wish I give you my peace said the Lord and God puts his peace into our hearts let there be glory in the name of, the, of our Lord because God is a God of peace let there be glory in the, in the name of our Lord to which also we were called in one body having Christ our head the church is the body of Christ that's what it says and we all are members of others we are members of the body of Jesus Christ and the smallest is important even the smallest person is important for the Lord and if one member suffers the whole body suffers even in the, if the smallest part of the body suffers then the whole body suffers I shouldn't ever say that my little finger pains uh, never mind I will take care of it glory be to the name of our Lord and the Lord takes care of us he takes care of us though we are small if you uh, feel small then you are blessed because God will take care of you even more because God takes care of, uh, of those who are weak even more let there be glory in the name of our Lord and be thankful grateful it's an ugly thing to be unthankful think about the ten leper man he healed all of them and he told them he asked them what do you wish to heal us we are leper men and he told them go and show yourselves to the priests to the Pharisees and give the gift that you owed woe as the uh, law of Moses says for your cleansing and they went and no one turned back but only one and he said to him ten people were in healed where are where are the rest nine only one came back and he wasn't an Israelite only one came back but he who came back he showed this gratitude to what the Lord did beside his healing what did he receive he received his salvation who thank God and let the word of Christ dwell in you richly and we ought, my beloved brethren to know the word of God to meditate in it because there is danger to be deceived there are things that are not easy to understand that those who don't study the Word of God pervert them and why are they doing this they are doing for their own perdition since he doesn't know the Word of God he goes wherever the, the, the wind blows the other one says to him this and that and everything's correct no it's not so this is what is right this is what is 
um, the gospel of Jesus Christ. But we should know it. If we don't know what it says, then if we don't study, if we don't stay in the things that the Lord told us, and the four things to have um, communion, to to receive the doctrines of the apostles, to stay in prayers and to have fellowship, then, then the word of God won't dwell in us richly. Glory be in the name of our Lord. But it should well in us richly in all wisdom. And if we feel that we don't have wisdom, we have the Lord who says that he who feels that he doesn't have wisdom, let he ask from the Lord who gives and who do not revile. We have a Lord who is rich. We should go and ask from him. He won't revile us. He won't laugh with us. People might laugh with us if they hear us. But the Lord won't do this. He doesn't revile us. We should ask from the Lord who give and who doesn't revile us, brethren. Solomon, didn't he go and ask wisdom from him? And why did he do this? Notes that so that he may show up himself among other people and say what nice king we have. But he did this. He asked wisdom for the work of God because he had a people, a people to rule on. And God liked this. And he said to him, Because you have asked me this for your for the work, you should know that I will give you wisdom. And God gave it to him. We know this very well. And all the rest that you didn't ask for, I will, I will give you. Because the Lord knows what we need. And before we ask them, the Lord knows. We thank God. But if we put above all, above all, above the desires that we have, uh, if we ask for the work of God, then the Lord is pleased with us, my beloved brethren. The Lord is pleased. We make the Lord to be pleased with us. Let there be glory in the name of our Lord. And, and we should admonish one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in, in, in our hearts to the Lord. We thank God. Of course, we should teach. Um, this is something that is not granted to all. Someone that hasn't meditated in the Word of God and he couldn't uh, receive a young brother and tell him what to do. God has appointed people in the church. And... We are not talking personally. Here in the pulpit, the gospel says, we shouldn't go that I will tell you what to do. Why? Who am I to say this, to go to the other one, what to do? Because these things make makes others to become offended if you tell him something that he cannot accept. Why do you go to him personally and tell him what to do? We have to be careful, brethren. We thank God for His Word. And whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. Whatever we do, brethren, as we said, we do it not so that we should listen from other people, bravo, but so that we should listen from our Lord, well done, good and faithful servant. Let there be glory in, the, in his holy name. May the Lord bless us. Amen.